What's up, everybody? It's your boy Mars Man here. And today we are going over the Witcher Season 3 Part 1 review. And we're going to focus specifically on Episodes 3, 4, and 5 for this video. We're going to talk about the good and the bad. And we're also going to talk about the overall season outlook, uh, how we think about this first half of this season drop. And we're going to break this down into two separate parts. We're going to have the first part be a non-spoiler review. So for anyone who has not seen the episodes that wants to watch them, this is just this is just for you and you can watch this. Or even if you watch, did watch the uh, entire thing, you can actually just stay, stay tuned and see what our review ratings are, as well as in the second half going over the spoiler discussions, we're going to talk about really some big events that happened throughout the different episodes and kind of give our feedback about what we think about them overall. But let's just jump right into the non-spoiler review. So overall, when I'm thinking about episodes three, four, and five, we're going to couple them together. This is a lot of stuff to go over, but I think the overall outlook is that these episodes were not as bad as what a lot of people were painting them to be. I think overall at this point, what it was like a 24% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is horrifyingly bad. Um, I don't think it's really to that degree. I think there is a lot of politics in this season compared to what we've seen in the previous two, which is a, which is a lot. I mean, that is one of the biggest things. And if you're not a fan of politics, if you're not a fan of the mages politics, not a fan of the kingdoms politics, you're not a fan of any of that stuff, right? Then there, this, this season might be a little tough for you. And episodes three, four, or five really do focus a lot on the po political side of the Witcher series. And there is a lot of that kind of backstabbing a lot of that side things uh, side deals going on throughout the books throughout the games throughout everything so this show really does paint that picture now one of the big things though that i feel like when i looked at these episodes i thought the characters did a great job i think there is a lot of cast members on this show well more than i even imagined from when i first had heard that there was going to be a witcher tv show i mean I played the game, there's a lot of characters in there, but they all have a lot of screen time. They all performed well playing their characters, and each of them seems like a pretty good, like viable character throughout the entire time watching them. Um, I think overall pacing was a little off for these episodes. I feel like the problem that they kind of faced was they were looking to be like a Game of Thrones type of show with so many side stories going on at the same time that it feels as if they are jumping from, th from person to person from scene to scene and at times it can get confusing about what the hell's going on here and i think that was one of my kind of you know issues that i had i thought episode three was not bad i thought if i was giving it my ratings episode three was a six and a half i think i think it's better than episode two i gave that one a five and a half um i think it was better than episode two i think that was one of the most boring episodes of the entire first part Episode three and four to me were identical. I gave them both six and a half. They had a lot of politics, a lot of side deals going on, a lot of, um, you know, surprises to me when it came to like what, you know, I feel like some things they could have let have breathe a little bit more, some things to let people have their own little like issues kind of play out so you can kind of feel more of the, more of the issues kind of get their day, get their, their limelight. And then the, but the the coveted episode five, which everyone talked about as being one of the worst things to close out the season, I gave it a six. I still think it's better than episode two. Episode two is the worst of the five episodes so far for me. A lot of politics in the episode, um, and I think when we'll talk about it in the spoiler discussion, but the pacing for that one was probably the biggest problem. I think overall, it was all over the place, and um, and obviously now it's the ha it's the first part ending it's closing for another what two weeks until the second half does arrive so a lot of people were angry at the cliffhanger so we're not going to talk about the cliffhanger but i gave that one a six so overall i think those are my ratings six and a half six and a half and a six so angelica what was your feelings about the good and bad you can give the kind of overview of all of them and give me your ratings for every episode yeah, and so for me, and just kind of disclose this, we are big fans of the Witcher games and the world of Witcher, but we're not huge lore book guys. So to me, we're coming from a kind of a gamer's perspective on just kind of the love for um, the overall uh, scene and the, the characters of the Witcher. Um, and IGN, I know they do a dive in on the differences between the book and the show. Um, they do a pretty good article, but if you haven't watched it, I probably wouldn't look at it until afterwards. So they kind of break things down and there are definitely differences. I think there's less differences in this season compared to season two, but there are some major differences. So 
Um, for me overall, I think again, the characters are pretty enticing. I, I, a lot of people say that this is very extremely boring, but some of the plots and some of the characters I think have been pretty enjoyable and also been pretty well balanced between the main characters. And I know there was a lot of discussion before the season I was waiting for, are they pulling away from Geralt and focusing more on Ciri and focusing more on Yennefer? I think they do a pretty good job of balancing it. Henry Cavill has obviously done a tremendous job as Geralt. And I think the other main characters have been pretty strong. But this show, to me, Mars, feels like some really strong moments mixed with a, some seriously dumb moments. And that's what really hurts the show is there's some good and some really dumb um, that that just kind of pulls this show back a little bit for me. But if I'm giving my grades here, again, I like politics things. Now, this isn't some su succession or major Game of Thrones plot lines, but it's still some enticing plot lines. Uh, mixed in with some monster hunting which is good but uh, episode three i'm at a six and a half as well episode four i'm gonna bump it up to six and six point eight i think it was a little bit stronger than three but the last one uh i hated the structure of it i really didn't like did not like the structure of the episode again a lot of politician uh, politics but the way they kind of structured it really hurt the pacing of it um even though there was some big uh kind of cliffhanger so for me, that one is at its lowest. I had episode two out of six, and I'm giving that a six, episode five. And I hated the split. I'm not going to lie. This is a Netflix stupidity move with the split that they had to do at this moment. Yeah, I think a lot of backlash overall feelings of the show was because of the factor splitting and obviously the whole Henry Cavill like no drama question. that's going behind it caused yeah. a lot of people just to despise the project altogether. And going along with that is the feeling of how is this first half reflect on the show? Is there the show really have a chance? Is it going to progress? Is it going to get worse from here? What's your overall outlook? And I'll talk about mine. I think overall this first half, I think a lot of people were a little bit overreacting to, I, I mean, granted, I'm a big fan of Henry Cavill and I'm sad that he's gone because I don't know what's going to happen with the show when he's gone. I don't know. And nothing against Liam Hemsworth. I you know he's he's a cool guy, I'm sure. And um, he did some pretty good job in, uh, in, in Hunger Games. I mean, He's, he's an actor. He, he got the role because he's an actor. He, he tried out and everything. So I'm nothing against him as an actor. I just think that Henry Cavill, being an avid fan of the Witcher series, the books, the games, he lived and breathed this entire series. And the biggest issues that we saw behind the scenes was that he loved it so much that he was like defending Geralt's character from doing stupid things from the, what the writers were doing. So like, when you're a fan and you hear that, you're just like, dude, this guy is one of us and he's trying to be do right by Geralt, which is what we all want any game adaptation or, or you know gaming media adaptation to be, right? To be to do right by the characters. And so when he is being axed or he's leaving, and partly you don't know what the main reason is, whether it's because of that main cause, the writers are not on the same page with him, or he just has so much stuff going on behind the scenes, whether it may be that automatically made the outlook of the show go down. I don't think necessarily this first half is doing any rhyme or reason pushing people to say, this is a horrible show. I don't think this this season so far has done anything to say, this is a bad outlook going forward, right? They didn't do anything bad, in my opinion. There are some things that are questionable, but there was nothing that made me like, look at the Halo show, for example, that maybe just like, I'm sick to my stomach and I can't watch this again because of how bad it was. Yeah. This show did nothing like that. it was just more about the out. But you know what's happening in the future, right? That caused people to be like, I don't know if I even want to watch this anymore because maybe I do get attached. And then all of a sudden I don't have Henry Cavill there anymore. It might just feel completely different. So I think this this first half is not that bad, but it's going to be tough to see whether it's going to have any impact going forward. But Angelica, what do you feel about this season or this show going forward? After No question. The Henry Cavill news has kneecapped this at least part one for this and and the numbers tell you when you look at rotten tomatoes there's a big divide it's 85 percent recommended by critics although it's at i think a seven out of ten right and that's kind of how i feel it's not a great show but it's not a bad show but the user score was at the 30s the other day and it's now all the way down to 24 percent it's worse than the idol which is a terrible show but again i just feel this is the henry cavill hate that's being spewed at a high level um, for the show because of the news of his departure. And I like Henry. I think he's been great as as Geralt. And I think it's definitely a, you know, it, it's it's a bad look for to lose a character like this over some of the things that we've heard. So there is no question. But if you try to take that news out and try to be 
watching the show without the Henry Cavill leaving part, it's really not that bad. I, I think there there's some strong moments, like I mentioned, mixed with some stupid moments. And that's what really hurts. I, I'm actually more disappointed because I really thought there was potential in this show to be a high-end show. Right? Not, it's not a bad show, again, but a high-end show. And I don't know if the writers can overcompensate losing a character, um, a, a familiar character like Henry Cavill. It's true. It's true. And so overall, I want to ask, what do you guys think about the outlook of The Witcher TV show? Do you think this is a good outlook? Do you think it's going to be bad? Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. Stick around for part two, which is going to be our spoiler discussion. Let's head there now. All right, guys, here is the spoiler discussion of The Witcher season three. We are talking specifically about episodes three, four and five. And so in this second half, we're really just going to talk about some of the major plot points that happened overall. And uh, I'm going to start with C episode three. And I think there are some very interesting things that happened. And, you know, we talked about the first half of the show that there are some key things that this season has done to drift away from the books. But it, has, it surprisingly was closer to the lore than the previous two, uh, really yeah. the last season compared to the others. And um, what's one of the key things I want to talk about first is obviously, you know, right from the get go, uh, which, you know, Geralt obviously goes and meets with. Um, one of his friends that he has known, uh, actually a friend of his, one of the friends of his mother, uh, a druid who was going to help kind of take care of this girl who thinks that she's Siri. And one of the big moments that happens between this connection between Geralt and uh, I think I think her name was Anika. Um, I could probably butcher her name a little bit, but basically one of the interactions they have throughout this part was not even just the beginning, but it was kind of like a even like even when they return back to that scene yeah, trying to was the, the scientifically engineered theory yeah, they're trying to get information yeah they're trying to they're them. trying to calm her mind because she's going nuts and yeah, so they're trying to calm her mind who did yeah. this to her and all that and they're actually while the girl's resting and trying to get over the sickness that they as she has you know um and she gets she kind of goes nuts injures anika and when anika is kind of resting Geralt asked about her, his mother because he told her before that she ended up getting killed and she was battered and bruised and which is pretty messed up and Geralt if you don't know, remember Geralt was basically sold away to the witchers to be turned into a witcher himself and you know Geralt had a lot of resentment toward her because of that because obviously when you when you go into this life you're never going to be the same again and you can't like oh it's 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 messed up and so when talking about her he gets choked up because he's like, you know, talking about like how he never hated, he never really truly hated her. He wanted the best for her, but he just didn't understand what was like, why she would do these things. And one of the big things that happens here is that he tears up, he cries, which is completely against the lore. Um, I'm sure that Henry Cavill himself probably was like, Geralt can't cry. And I'm sure they're like, well, you just got to cry for a second. Like, it's got to be an like, emotional moment. It, it, and I get it. You're making this emotional moment. And and i think that's where the writers lose some of those lore fans a lot because the whole concept of the witchers themselves is very similar you know it, it's more like they can't have emotions right they can't have emotions and that's why people see them as being like monsters themselves because they don't have that emotion but even though they do feel emotions but they can't show it because they lose the pigment to do they don't lose the ability to do that so by him crying it literally just says well we're not following that concept from the books or the games and we're just saying yeah whatever we're doing what we want and a lot of people including myself and Yulin Jill Kill felt a little annoyed by this yeah. because it kind of just you know it kind of ruins that little aspect yeah like you and, and, and yeah, again that's like details right you're talking details and just a quick note before you move to the next one that fight before where the girl kind of is possessed and she's trying to counter she takes the uh, medallion off the werewolf that is part in that house once she removes a dalian, all of a sudden he starts turning into a werewolf, but werewolves only turn during full moons. So I don't know why he was randomly turning. I don't know. They're, 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 like, they're just trying just to little increase details. like stress. Yeah, it's little like, details that just the stupidity. That's what I'm talking about previous. Strong moments. Like I actually liked that interaction. You could have done it at night. It would have made more sense if they blasted a hole through the house and the moon showed or something, right? Like just those details. Of why why would a werewolf turn in broad daylight in the house just yeah. because the lion was removed? That doesn't make sense. Yeah, and I agree with you. I feel like those little things you just it just call try to add, add stress or bring uh, you know conflict there. But let's keep it going. Episode three had a little a few things that were a little like weird to us, and I feel like the other big thing was 
So the whole concept within, you know, uh, Vizimir, who is obviously the head of Redania at the time, he's the, he is the king. You know, there's a lot of internal politics going on between Deistra and Philippa. And which also, I like. I really, which is, I, is, is honestly on, one of the better yeah, aspects. Yeah, they're not big the in the season. books at this point, but I, I like the, yeah, I like Deistra and Philippa. But yeah, the, 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 the conflicts going on here, I think are honestly the best part of the season so far. And, uh, you know, R Ragovin, uh, I think it's Rad, Rado, Rado, yeah, Radovin is basically he's the younger brother. Um, in the books, he's a lot younger, and in the books, yeah. Vizimir is his father. It's not even his older brother, but you know, there's a whole conflict going on where even Radovin is also trying to prove that he is a lot more capable than what what everyone assumes that he is, because he always comes off as like an airhead a lot of times. But um, a lot of the inter internal struggle where you know Vizimir is like starting to meet with the Nilf Guardians and saying, oh yeah, like. I've almost agreed at this point to like become a vassal state and you know well uh, and we'll find Siri for them and we'll give them back to them and Deistra is just like dude they're, they're playing you completely and he's just waving them off like yeah no you don't you don't want to talk about I know what I'm doing here and at that point they realize that they need to take control of this situation and they're going like hydraulic level 10 of what they're going to need to do to just take control of it rather than talking with Vizimir or possibly meeting with the queen herself and talking with her, they just ultimately just jump to beheading her, putting it in a basket, giving it and to Vizimir, and saying, oh, this is on behalf of the Nilf Guardians. Even though, like, it, honestly, when you think about it, it makes no sense whatsoever. Because the <laughs> Nilf Guardians are like, oh, this guy's agreeing to become a vassal yeah. state of ours and to find Siri for us. That sounds fantastic. And the next thing we're gonna do is behead the queen and yeah. give it to them on a, on a silver platter, basically. Which is, first off, it was a shocking part. I did not expect that to yeah. happen. But I was also kind of confused because I'm like, dude, why would the Nilf Guardians do that when you literally just agreed that to quickly. be a puppet state? Like, yeah. you just agreed to be a puppet state for them in one scene. And then the next scene, your queen's dead. Oh, by half of the Nilf Guardians. Like, that doesn't make any sense. And you believed it. That's why it was so confusing. And I know that um, the next part, it's really like uh, Redovan is like, Dude, you did this, Dishra. Like, I know you did this. And he's just like, yeah, I did it. What, are you going to tell him? Because he's not going to believe you. He trusts me. And he's just like, and he's like, well, you I better hope. the box, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's like, you better hope. Yeah, you're the one delivered the box. I could just tell him that you did it. And then he would just kill you too. Or like, you better hope that, you know, stay sick, follow what I say. And that's bottom line. Like, all that stuff. And a part of me was like, yeah, I, it was kind of okay for me with Dishra telling him, like, dude, you better not, you better know the your scheme, role. Yeah, the yeah, scheme, yeah. I know is your not role. The yeah. Again, it's the pacing. That's like it's the. It was literally the next the scene pacing. after he talked yeah. with them. He didn't even have a scene with the queen. It just felt like yeah. maybe they had the scene. And they just said, "Screw it, we're not. We're just gonna cut it out of the final cut." And they just had her beheaded. Like it just felt like they missed the scene with the queen at least to say maybe like they confront her and say, "Hey, ease off this no guardian stuff." And then she's like, "No, I'm pulling the strings." And then they're like, "Oh yeah, you pull the strings." Schedule. And then clap. Yeah, we gotta you know what I mean? hurry this plot up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't understand that. I, I mean, I just think that it was a little like out of nowhere. It was shocking. Again, I like I the character. Yeah, it was, and I like yeah. the characters, but it just felt like it's fast, too fast. Um, so then we'll jump to the next thing, and this is also a pretty good concept. I like this whole internal struggle with the elves for a, a general point. I like the Scoyatel is a great group. Yeah, I mean they're from the games too. Um, and they are, you know, their leader, I, I, my name escapes me. Um, it was, uh, Gar it was a Garrett. Uh, it was Galen. Galen. Yeah. Galen. Yeah. Galen yeah, meets with Amir, right? And now Emperor Amir is like, he's the bad dude. He's the head. He's Siri's father, all that stuff. He, you know, so he's meeting with him and telling him, Hey, listen, Francesca's like doing the worst job girl. possible. Like yeah, he's trying to find a girl. girl. She's getting all of her. Yeah. yeah. She's getting all of our elves killed. You told her that we need to start destroying the north a little bit so that you can take over and let me control them. I'll do you whatever you want. And once he hears that she's trying to find some girl, you know, Amir's just like, oh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll take care of you. Just stay here, stay the night. And then he tells Kahir, like, listen, you need to do a job for me. And if you can prove that you're worth staying alive, then you can then be re-entered. And the very next scene, I think, Kahir is meeting with his boy uh, <laughs> Gar Garrett and just caps Galen. Galen. Slits just, just, just slits his throat. Yeah. Gonzo, right? Gonzo beans. And yeah. and you're like, what the hell is going on? And and now, like, 
when he talks to Amir like the next morning, like literally the next scene after that is that Amir like, hey, so I heard you just decapitated him for me. That's great. And he tells him, listen, like, I had a feeling that Amir is going to do something screwed up. Like, Amir is a messed up dude, so I could have yeah. seen it happening. Yeah. Um, and, you know, what he says is like, yeah, uh, you know, we're going to take care of Francesca. And it seems like the plan is we're going to use her to the fullest extent, and then they, they're going to get rid of her. Like, as just the same way that they got rid of with um, <laughs> with Gar uh, Garrett. Um, I keep messing up with Galen. <laughs> All right, whatever, whatever his name is. It doesn't matter. He, he's he's gone. All right. But the whole point is, I kind of liked the idea of it. I, yeah. Same. I liked. I I, I kind of liked it. I, I like. Yeah. This is like some Game of Thrones stuff, but again, it's just like, boom, 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 boom. Right. Like that's just right at run, you, run, you, run. Like that's You could have. You could have made this more like near the end. Like you could have made it where like you. He told him his job. Then near the end of the episode, you have him killed. Like you could have even done it that way. So at least it's like you build the suspense, like oh that's one thing going on. Because then, because then you go to stuff like like smaller things. Like now, granted, the Vizmir, you know, Vizmir's wife getting killed happened near the end of the episode, right? And I think, but even then, like it's just it just didn't feel like they gave enough time between things. Because at the end of episode three, like is the dumbest, weirdest ending I've seen. And that was when Siri gets is traveling with the worst green screen possible. And the wild hunt is just magically the there. Wild hunt. Wild hunt's the magically word. there. Then Geralt just magically yeah. appears to stop them. And they don't explain rhyme or reason any of this stuff. They just it just happens. Like she she's wishing to emulate. Like yes, please find me. Like here's yeah, my I location. Yeah, and I that's, think yeah, that's that was what Geralt I'm gets. telling myself. I'm telling yeah. myself that that's how Geralt found her because they don't explain it. They don't say, oh yeah, I found you with this. And oh, oh okay, makes sense because they don't do that. And I feel like. Go, uh, I could talk all day about episode three's ending, but we should move on. Yeah. Episode but four. That was bad. Yeah, because that was pretty gross. That was a pretty ending. gross ending yeah, that for was that. I think episode four, the biggest things I looked into, because obviously now the whole goal is Geralt and, and Siri, like, hey, we need to go to Artuza. You know, we need to see Yennefer and the mages. They need to teach you all this stuff. And they need to get a boat. I thought the whole boat uh, scene was was not bad. I think the whole like yeah. the funny thing was like with Jaskier has the rally yeah. with the other that band was crew. Yeah, it was, was pretty funny. Good. The boat scene, I thought more people were going to get killed. I thought the band, oh, I thought the whole band was going to get to be honest well, I was, with you. The monster was just like, just grabbing them, the chef, but not yeah, <laughs> slapping them around with his tail and like just lets them go. I thought they were going to get killed. I was like, oh, these, all these guys are dying. They're singing. They're going to get killed. Um, but they didn't. No, no one died. And I was well, surprised. They had a pretty cool fight scene there. Pretty yeah. good green screen stuff. I thought yeah. they did a good job. Um, and then Yennefer is now plotting. I think this is on the little things. I mean, I know the got the conclave is a pretty big deal. Um, it's it's supposed to be like a meeting between everybody, and that's the what episode be like five. Like the Game of Thrones wedding. Yeah, Game of Thrones, right? yeah, wedding. <laughs> but like, it was kind of funny. It was like the whole the whole setup was that Yennefer wants to have like a ball. Like, let's <laughs> let's plan a party the day before the conclave <laughs> to get everyone together to talk. And it was yeah. just kind of like. It's just why? like, dude, we're, yeah, why are we doing like, a party? Like, we're doing a party right now? Like, like playing a ball? Because they, they tried to quickly mention, right, that they've done this in the past. And, like, it was an important event. Let's just have but a like, party. Like, I feel like you need to give a little bit more impact on why this is important. Like, cause let's have like, a shindig. Let's, guys, let's just go have a shindig. Yeah. Let's go have a dance. Let's have a get-together and let let's all have, our Let's have some wine. And we're all good. Yeah. All right? You know what I mean? It was just... And they, they made it seem like this party was more of a bigger deal than the Conclave. Uh, and then... The Conclave made it sound like it was a damn, like, it was Armageddon. It was like, this is going to be straight up mayhem. Like, Ragnarok's going to happen at tomorrow. So we let's just go drink wine and have fun together before that happens. And so the whole setup to this was that, you know, like, Siri and Jasker are together. And so right away, like, that gets ruined because um, Jasker has a thing for uh, uh, Radovan. Um, and and I already know that Siri's already going to get, a, like, abducted. I, I don't even have to, like... Think about it. I know she's gonna get abducted for the next next half, but but yeah, that, it ends with them going to the party, right? And then episode five is the they party. kill a wyvern. You know, forgot the they, baby. They wyvern. did. They did kill a baby a wyvern in there yet. with did. with the the bodyguard punching <laughs> the wrong person, <laughs> no, punching the monster tamer, not the yeah. mon not the monster itself. He's like. I'm here to protect Siri. Punches the monster garter, <laughs> which he was probably going to try to tame the monster, like because it's his it's his monster. Even though he's calling Siri like a bitch or whatever, like yeah, he's not going to attack Siri while the monster's attacking. Uh, he was coming up to that. I didn't know like, oh, you, you bitch. And then he's just like punches her, like yeah, I'm here to protect her, like talking trash on, him. <laughs> like while Siri's like barely battling a wyvern, like, like come on now, yeah, like what the what the hell are we doing? 
Um, and then and the random guy's just like, Dude, no, you're you're so you're so not wrong. Like he, he's deaf. The monster is a monster. Like he's like fighting with every fire in his being. Yeah, it was a basilisk for sure. Like, well, well, who cares? It's 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 a wyvern. It doesn't matter if it's a basilisk wyvern. Like whatever. But the final episode is the biggest thing because it's the party. And what's wild is the entire party's plot ends within the first fifteen to eighteen minutes. Like the whole party ends in eighteen minutes. But the way they set up the episode, because this whole episode was was all political. It was just a political like ins and outs, who's getting on whose side, who's neutral, who's not. That was literally what the whole thing. You have two sides. We have Vilgefortz who's trying to recruit people to his side. We have Deistra's trying to recruit people to his side. And you know, it was a it was look like people are drawing battle lines. And you know, the whole thing ends in 18 minutes. Then they go back and they re-show all the scenes again, but just from a different perspective of other people talking. And it fills in the blanks of basically that, that Geralt and Yennefer were trying to find information about Stregobor, that he was basically part of the reason why all those kids are being abducted, and he was going to get these books to try to like yeah, find the ability find to go he time hates, and space. He really hates elves. Yeah, he and is he a anti-elf person. Anybody who's got elvish blood. Do- doesn't like oh. the ears, and you know he's trying to get rid of everybody, and they Even get him that. arrested. Yeah, they try to get him arrested. But then the end of the episode, and this is where the most controversial part happens. The end of the episode, after Gerald finds out that that it wasn't Stranglebore that was the one that was trying to make these, at least you know, in higher reach. Yeah, it was was yeah, it was not doing was not doing a lot of this scheming. Like, he did some messed up things. Don't get me wrong. He was trying to get rid of all the elves, but he wasn't trying to like duck these kids and and you know all this extra stuff. It was Vilgefort that was doing it. And all of a sudden, now they're like bugging out like, oh crap, we gotta go take out Vilgefort. And as Geralt runs out of the room, he gets stopped by Deistra with a knife. And like the most little finger way, right? the most dumbest right? thing. Just, no, yeah, it, dumb, was like the, it looked like they were trying to do the little finger. It was identical to little finger. Well, like, turns on Ned Stark. Yeah, yeah. But like, it's funny because Geralt... should have chose a side. Yeah, you should have chose the side, Geralt. And then that's how it ends. Yeah, the, exactly. the, the episode ends. And then that means you have to wait two weeks to find out what happens next. But the point is, is that it just it ended so abrupt. Like, I understand that and here, here's the problem. If it, they didn't have this break, then I don't think it would have been a problem. I don't think the ending would have pissed anyone off. I think they would have been like, oh, no, like Daryl got stuck. It's going to happen for next episode. Yeah, and they hear and they'd watch the next on. one. Yeah. And they watch the next episode. And they just find out. And I don't think it's like people are like, well, is it just because people are butthurt that it had a good cliffhanger or anything? Like, I don't even think it was like a bad or good cliffhanger. I just think that you usually when you have a break, like Stranger Stranger Things, when they have a break, it's a massive and it just it's the halfway point massive event occurs and they take a break. And then that that's when they come back a little bit later. But this is two weeks. This it's three episodes. Just just give put the whole season out. Like I don't, that, that was oh, it was a month later when it came out, right? We we watched I get it. it I get it. But weeks. like still, like it's just but it's here, stupid. I'm gonna actually counter what you said. I actually thought the ending wasn't bad. Yeah. I actually think the cliffhanger wasn't bad. I just thought first 10 to 15 minutes of this episode was rough the way that they're showing the politics i like the politics and everyone has their own little scheme um, about how to attack this thing but the way that they were bouncing from scenario to scenario going back in time going forward right to me that was where it was just it was a drag it was a drag and they were set up it was like they you know they did it it was like a smart plan and i get they were trying to be unique it was like again like a kind of pulp fiction type of thing but it just it it didn't really work for me i just wish they just did it pretty linear they tried to be and i give them some credit for trying to be innovative but it did not stick for me and to me they just dragged on but the ending in my part finding out about available forts by realizing that he has the same diamonds the lady dropped the diamonds it's the same diamonds with the mage with the earrings who can't speak and they find out that she's the one who's helped facilitating this thing with reens Right. And Vilgefortz hired her. Right. So there's the, you know, the big moment. And then they leave to hear commotion. And that's when the ending happens. I didn't mind that aspect. The first 15 minutes of this episode was rough. It was definitely rough for sure. But overall, though, guys, I think that that's going to be it for the episode. 
What did you think about the episodes three, four, and five? What did you think about the entire season for the first half? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. Until next time, this is Mars Man signing off. Peace out, guys.